In this video we'll be assembling the Viking rocket by Estes. This is a classic model rocket kit going back at least 40 years and this actually used to be part of the Cub Scout rocketry program quite a few years ago as well. I don't know that it still is. Compared to many of the beginners rockets that are available today this one's a little bit more complex and requires some more time to finish although it can still be completely built in an afternoon. As with any kit, we want to make sure that all the parts are here, so I'm going to go through our parts list here and make sure that we haven't missed something. Uh, here's the, the body tube, the fin set, and yes, those are cardboard, um, the decals that we'll use at the end, and then this uses a streamer recovery, there's our streamer there, uh, elastic shock cord, and then depending on the kit, some of the kits were made with a uh, balsa nose cone and some with a plastic nose cone. This one has a plastic nose cone that comes in two pieces. Uh, it has the, the main nose itself and then the base uh, is a little piece of plastic like that. This will have to be glued together later. Uh, and then the engine block, this is really the entire engine mount here. This is what we call a minimum diameter rocket. So the body tube is the rocket motor mount. And then the little yellow tube that comes with it, this is actually a spacer, um, not the motor mount. So this is used in place of a motor to properly space where the thrust ring or engine block goes. Okay, so we've got everything here that we need to build the rocket. Um, next, this one also has quite a few small hobby tools that you're going to need to go with it. You'll need some small hobby tools here, as I mentioned, that aren't included with the kit. First of all, I would recommend that you have some sort of covering for your work surface. I'm using some recycled scrapbook pages here, but newspaper or poster board or anything like that, a sheet of cardboard, um, just to protect your work surface so you don't accidentally cut something or put glue on it. We're going to need some form of a razor knife or hobby knife like this. If you don't have one of these, a straight edge, uh, single edged razor blade will work. Some form of a pencil. Um, I'm in favor of mechanical pencils because you can get a really fine line, but any type of number two pencil will work just fine. You're going to need a ruler. Nothing fancy, although I do recommend you get one that has both English and metric scales on it. Um, you'll need some sandpaper, at the very least some fine grit, so somewhere around 200 to 250 grit paper. And there's a step in here where the instructions ask you to sand the fins, and I recommend having some extra fine sandpaper for that, around 400 grit. We're going to need at least two types of glue. Um, because this does have a plastic nose cone that needs some assembly, we'll need some plastic modeling cement. And then for the rest of the model, either some white glue or some carpenter's wood glue. Either one of these are fine. The wood glue tends to be a little bit thicker and sets up a little bit quicker. The white glue gives you a little bit more working time. Um, and I would just use whatever you have on hand. There's no need to go out and buy a whole new bottle of glue because you don't have one or the other. Okay, a little bit of masking tape will come in handy to hold things together temporarily. And then for the, the rest of this is going to depend on how you want to finish your rocket. The instructions uh, assume that you're going to spray paint it, which means you're going to need some primer as well as the, the colored paint of whatever your artistic desires need. Okay, so if we look at the instructions here, on the front there are some fin marking guides. We're going to come back to these here in just a little bit, um, but just to be aware of them, these we'll be using later on in the instructions. Okay. Uh, and it turns out that this first part you can do in just about any order. So the instructions have us assembling the nose cone first and then cutting out the fins. You can do either one. Uh, the advantage of assembling the nose cone first is that you give it time to dry while you're doing some of the other procedures here. So here's our nose cone 
and the base of it is here. Uh, you may want to check on here and make sure there's no flash, which is just residual plastic from the molding procedure. And if you have any on there that might get in the way, you can simply trim that off a little bit here. Um, this one's actually pretty clean. You can also sand off some of the, the flash that's on there. And this is especially true if you're planning on painting this anyway. Uh, and this can also be done after we get it glued together. So we'll go ahead and do that here. Uh, according to the instructions, they say to put a, a bead of model cement right around the perimeter here. So we're going to do that. I have very runny model cement here. It's really wanting to come out. So just be careful you don't get it on the outside. Okay, and then we're going to just set the, put the base on. And I like to give this just a little bit of a twist. That helps the, the plastic cement um, bind to the plastic better. And then just hold that for a few seconds to make sure that it's getting tacky and sticking. And then we can set it aside and let that dry and we can go on to the next part. Okay, so these are somewhat unusual in that it's actually fairly rare to find cardboard fins in model rocket kits anymore. Uh, they tend to either be pre-assembled plastic or made out of balsa. Uh, these used to be more common back in the, the 70s and early 80s. And this kit is kind of a throwback. They, they still use much of the original material. Okay, so the instructions say to sand both sides of these. And I disagree a little bit with these, mainly because this uh, cardboard already has a, a fairly smooth finish. And sanding it is actually going to roughen it up more. If you do want to sand this, use a very fine grit sandpaper in the, the neighborhood of, of 350, maybe even all the way up to 500. Uh, but I find you really don't need to sand the sides unless it's got something on it. Now this particular one here um, looks like something during packaging or something got on that. almost feels like glue. And so I'm going to take some very fine sandpaper. This is 500 grit. And I'm going to go ahead and just try and rub off that imperfection there. Okay, and that improves things a little bit. At least now when we paint it, um, that won't be sticking out. And since I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. Like I said, as long as there's nothing wrong with the surface, you really don't need to do this step. Um, but if you have to do it on one, you may as well keep it uniform. Okay, and again, the back side of these don't have quite the same finish. But don't spend a lot of time on this. Remember, this is still essentially paper, cardboard. Um, if you sand it too much, you're going to put divots in it. Now take your hobby knife and simply cut through the remaining little bits of cardboard here. And these you will want to sand off. Okay, we'll just gently push on those. You don't want to push on these so much to break them. If they're, they're showing resistance, go back and cut them again. Otherwise you may tear into the fin itself. Okay, so there's one. Uh, and you have the choice on this of using between three and five fins. And you can orient these fins in any direction. And in fact, to a certain extent, they don't even have to be oriented all in the same direction. So as long as you kind of keep symmetry on one side to the next, um, you can put these in any direction that you like. Okay. 
and then one more. Um, at this point, I still haven't decided which way I'm going to make these, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut them all out. Okay, so there we have our fins. Um, you may even want to hang on to the, this remnant here for at least until you get the rocket finished, um, because in case you mess up a fin, there's actually enough room over here on the side to cut out another fin if you need a replacement. Okay, so now we want to gather all these together um, and stack them so that they all have the same finish going in the same direction here. So I'm getting the, the smoother side pointing out. And we've got these little remnants of the tabs from the die cutting process here. And we want to get rid of those. So to do that, um, take some fine sandpaper, 220 grit or so, and just take that whole stack and just pull it backward a few times. You don't need to move back and forth on this. Okay, and check and make sure that they aren't sliding on you so that you end up with um, slants on here. At this point, you want these edges to be perfectly even and perpendicular. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the next edge. Okay, and then to the next one here. I got something underneath there. Make sure your, your surface is good and flat. Okay, so that's still got a little bit of residue there. Fins are trying to move on me. Some more. Okay, and then the last edge here. Okay, and there's still a little bit on there, and we can take care of those. And it's at this point that we need to decide which way we want our fins to go. Alright, so if we come back to our instructions here, um, they give a nice wide range here of different fin configurations. So the, the fins can be sticking upward and out, they can be sticking backward. Um, they can be close in, they can be far out, they can even be raked forward. Alright, so the kind of classic configuration for this is to use five fins where all of the fins are raked backward slightly um, but have the, the larger edge here, what we call the root edge, uh, against the body tube. The other raked configuration is to turn this around and put the, the smaller edge and you get kind of a, a butterfly look there. Um, depending on what you want to do. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and go uh, I've actually got another one of these models that has this configuration so I'm actually I kind of like this one um, where we use the longest edge as the root edge and then have five of these going all the way around. Kind of makes it look like a, a bazooka rocket, sort of. Okay, so in that case, what we want to do is now go through and make sure that our root edges are sanded completely flat. Because these are the parts that are going to go against the rocket, and we don't want any pieces sticking out here that would weaken the joint. All right, you still you can actually see a little bit here of where the, the die cutting procedure kind of bit into the cardboard. This will actually be hidden by glue later. All right, and then on the other edges, uh, we'll sand those as well. Uh, and sometimes you'll feel that the, there's an edge on this surface. This is the, the bottom surface, so when these were cut the die came down like this and that kind of forces the paper in one direction. And so we'll want to sand this as well. The instructions say to actually round the non-root edges and this gives it a, a semi-airfoil. Um, something you can do here and it's not absolutely necessary uh, but if you want to get a really nice airfoil edge to this you can take some super glue uh, or other cyanoacrylate glue. You want the really watery kind 
and run just a really slight bead of super glue along this, allow it to soak in and dry, and that will give you a really rigid surface here for sanding. Again, it's not absolutely necessary, and I'm not going to do it on this, but it's something if you want to get the highest performance out of your rocket, is something you can tweak the fins a little bit that way. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go through here and uh, sand the rest of these fins, and when we come back, we'll look at what to do to mount them. Alright, well, I'm back. That took about 10 or 15 minutes. And what we have now are the fins sanded. Actually, missed a little spot right there. And so now if I run my finger along the edges here, the back side, that ridge is gone. Um, I did leave the ridge in place here on the root edge after I sanded this perpendicular. And the reason for that is it just gives it a little bit more surface area for the glue to bond onto the body tube. And so all these have been sanded to the same size and everything. And I'm just going to set these aside for a moment. Uh, our next part is to mark the body tube, and this is where I was referring to back in the front. Back in the front, there's a, a turn of phrase. Um, so we have three different marking diagrams here. And so I'm doing the five fin version of this, so what I want to do is place my tube right in the middle of that. And then I'm going to use a pencil and just mark each point right at the base. Let's see if I can keep my head out of the view of the camera. Oops. And you do have to be careful that you don't wiggle yourself out of the way here. Okay, so there are five little ticks there for the fins, and then over here there's also one for the launch lug. Okay, and it's kind of in between two of the other ones. Um, and I'm going to, so that I know that this is not a fin, I made it a little bit bigger, and I'm also going to just put the launch lug on here, so I'm just going to draw LL. Okay, and so I'm just going to rotate this around and make sure they look even. All right, and then we're going to come back here. What we need to do now is actually draw a line from each of our little tick marks here um, up along the body tube so we know where the fins are going to go. And you can do this in a couple of ways, kind of the, the classic way has been to put this in a door frame. And so you set this up against the molding and simply draw a line that way. Um, over the years, there have also been a variety of marking guides that have come out that essentially do the same thing. They provide a, a right angle through which you can draw on the lines that you need. And so this is one of the fin marking guides made by Estes. They actually make a couple of them. Um, and so you can use this on the right side um, to mark lines as well. So either way, uh, just for the sake of ease under the camera here, I'm going to use this. And I'm just going to draw a light line there and then remove the next one, which in this case happens to be the launch lug line. Draw a line there. Another one here. Again, you don't need this little gizmo to do this. I was using door frames for 40 years or more. Do make the line a little bit longer than what you think you're going to need for the fence. That way you'll always have something to see as you're trying to align the fence. Back that just a little bit there. Okay. 
Um, with this particular model where I'm trying to put five fins on a fairly narrow body tube, this is an advantage of having a mechanical pencil over a typical wooden one. Alright, so now I've got a set of lines here, and they're not all the same size, but that's fine. They just need to be bigger than the fins. <clears throat> now, for this next part, the instructions say to attach the fins and the launch lug next. I'm going to say, nope, save that until after this next part. So, what I would do first is install the engine block. For this, you're going to need the little yellow tube that came in the small parts package, along with the thrust ring here. And so, if we look in the instructions here, it's asking for a quarter inch mark from the base of this or about six millimeters or so if you're metrically inclined. Okay, so I'm going to put my ruler here and put the zero mark and I'm going to put six millimeters. Okay, and this is how far we want the engine to stick out when it's actually installed into the rocket. And so I'm just going to dry fit this. This is not going to get glued in. Right, but we do want to make sure it slides in easily. And so if this was an engine, it would look like this. Now if we compare this on the outside of the body, that means the engine is going to go up to about this point. And this thrust ring here is going to go just beyond it. So this is what is going to keep the engine from launching itself through the body tube and out the other end instead of thrusting the rocket into the air. So what we want to do now is glue this so that we only have glue up in here and not down here where uh, if we do shove this in, the glue would glue our dummy motor here. and We don't want that. So to do this, um, the instructions call for a small stick or dowel. I like to use these. These are a long cotton tipped applicator. Um, if you have Q-tips at home or similar off-brand items, those will work as well. You just need something that you can get the glue up inside the rocket body um, that's long enough to get up where you need the motor retaining ring or thrust ring there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this in here. Um, I want the glue to be just beyond the engine. So that's where I'm going to put my uh, cotton swab. And then using my thumb, I'm going to mark on the shaft here where that motor is going to be. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take some glue. This is just good old common white glue. Will it dry it on there? The other problem with white glue is always on, stuck on the top. Alright, so now I'm going to take some glue here. Now you don't want this to be slopping off, but you don't want to skimp on it too much either. Um, because ultimately this is what's keeping the engine from flying out. Okay, now, very carefully put this into the body tube so that you're not touching the wall until your thumb reaches there and now you're going to just move this around in a circle and what this is doing is applying glue to the body tube only up where the thrust ring is going to be. You can take that out set it aside. Take your thrust ring slide that in with your finger until it's in all the way and then again um, make sure you've got the mark here on the outer end and now you're going to take this and simply slide it in, and this is going to push the thrust ring up into the glue. In fact, you'll probably feel a little resistance at the end, and take this out immediately. That way, if you did get a little glue a little bit further down, it won't glue this into the rocket. Okay. So now we can do the fins while the thrust ring is drying in there, because um, nothing that we're going to do here is going to affect where that thrust ring is going to stay. It's pretty much stuck where it is there. 
Now, apart from putting the fins on, over the years, lots of Rocketeers have come up with lots of different methods for doing this. Um, my method's a little bit different from what we see in the instructions. So in the instructions over here, um, they have you put a bead of glue along the root edge here and then let it dry for one minute and then put a second bead of glue along it and then at that point stick it to the rocket. What I prefer to do is similar to this, it doesn't require two beads of glue, and I'm going to actually use wood glue for this just because it is a little bit thicker. Okay, so I'm going to run a bead of glue. Oops, don't want it to fall off the edge there. Along here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this to the rocket. Now I'll pull it back off again. And so this is leaving a line of glue along my guideline here and also on the root edge of the fin. And notice I put the edge of the fin all the way down here to the base. And this is what you're going to want to do for most of them. Uh, if for nothing else it's easiest to align the fins that way, um, but it also helps keep them from breaking off. Uh, if you get it, you don't want to have them overhanging the tube like this on the root edge. Uh, this will get burned by the motor, and it also provides a weak point. Uh, if you want, you can move it up a little bit. You don't want to go too far. In fact, I wouldn't go any farther than one tube diameter. Um, there's actually some aeronautical consideration for doing that. It actually improves your streamlining a little bit. Uh, but if you move these too far forward, it can make the rocket unstable. Okay. But the key here is to let this dry for a minute or two. Uh, and that makes this glue set up and get tackier, and it'll make it stick better. And so I'm going to just set this aside. I'm actually going to use the, the old cardboard there from the, uh, the cutout. And I'm just going to let this sit for a moment here, so when I come back on the video, this will have been drying for just a couple of minutes. Okay, two minutes have gone by, and this is just starting to get a little bit tacky now. So now I'll put my fin back on here, again lining it up with the line that I drew. And apply that back on. Okay, and now I'm going to look down the tube here and make sure that my fin is nice and vertical. Right, we don't want it to, to slop over one way or another. And this is the part that takes a lot of patience, because now we want to let this dry for at least 15 minutes before we do the next fin. And so this is where we can often go wrong in this rocket is we get impatient and decide that eh, it looks good enough, we'll go to the next fan, and then you end up with crooked fins. And so uh, do take a little bit of patience here, and I'm going to come back, stop the video at this point, and when I come back we'll have all the rest of the fins put on. Okay, so all the fins are on now, and I've also applied the launch lug, and I did this the same way I did the fins. And so in the instructions here, it shows um, actually putting a bead of glue on the rocket just above the fin line on one of the shorter fin arrangements, and then just simply popping that on. Um, they show a, a measurement of about two inches, about five centimeters. On my rocket, that's going to be um, within the fins here because I'm using the, the longer edge as my root edge. I did this the same way I did the fins. So I, I took the... Uh, launch lug itself, applied a bead of glue to that, placed it temporarily on the line, pulled it back off, let that become tacky for a few minutes, and now I put it back on again. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside and let the fins and the launch lug continue drying. And our next part here is to assemble the shock cord. Okay, so this is the shock cord. It's just a, a long piece of elastic or rubber band. And to me, this seems a little bit short. Um, I've built this rocket using this. If you have it available, though, I would recommend getting a shock cord that's about twice this long. 
Uh, for elastic shock cords, I like to use uh, about twice as long as the rocket is, and this is only about the same length. Uh, now, if you don't have anything else, that's fine. Um, most likely, you'll have a successful flight, not any problem. Uh, it just helps to avoid the, the nose cones slamming back into the rocket, or sometimes what can happen is as this comes out of the rocket, it can pull back and actually damage the edge of the body tube. So if you have something available, um, either uh, a piece of rubber like this that's about twice as long, uh, or if you have sewing supplies at home, you can use uh, 1 8 inch or um, 1 8 inch flat elastic or 1 16th inch round elastic that's about twice this length or about, oh, say, 2 feet or uh, 60 centimeters or so. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do this with the, the one that comes with it. Just be aware that longer is okay. okay? Uh, the only problem with this, if you get it too long, it may not fit in the rocket. Now, if you go to the front page again of this, uh, over here next to the fin marking guides is this trapezoidal piece with numbers on it. And this is actually the shock cord mount. And you can either just cut this out of the instruction sheets like I'm doing here, uh, if you don't want to destroy your instruction sheets, you can also just make a photocopy of this and destroy it. Uh, or even just trace this out or measure it out and make a, a trapezoidal piece of paper. Okay. People who do this, um, self-designed rockets made out of completely out of parts instead of a kit, uh, just use a piece of paper or some light cardboard for this. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is I'm going to pre-fold this a little bit at the numbers just because it'll make us easier when it's all full of glue. Okay, and what you want to do here is first of all take either the white glue or the wood glue, either one. Okay, and you want a fairly heavy coating of glue on this and you go ahead and take your finger and smoosh that around on there. Now take your shock cord and run this a little bit diagonal from the two down across the three. Okay, so this I don't want it completely straight because this is going to fold in on itself and it's going to stay flatter. Keeps trying to move on me there. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is once that's in, I'm going to fold the 1 onto the 2. Okay, I'm going to squeeze all the air out of there so it's flat as it can be. Okay, and now I'm going to do this again and fold this over. And this is why I have this over a little bit of an angle. Because now it's not folding directly onto itself, it's folding beside itself. And then you can pick this whole thing up. Um, and one is just, you can move this a little bit, or it won't center completely, but move it toward the center. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead. This gets a little bit messy. Okay, now I'm going to bend this like so to give it approximately the same curvature as the inside of the body tube. Now I'm going to set that aside. I don't want it to dry completely, but I do want it to tack up just a little bit. Okay, and then coming back to our instructions, what you're going to do then is we'll apply some glue to this side of the mount, and this is going to go down inside the body tube here. And it has to go down at least an inch and a half, preferably farther. I like mine to go down as far as I can possibly get them. And this is another condition where if you have your little stick or applicator or something like this, um, instead of applying glue directly to the shock cord mount, is I like to apply my glue down inside the body tube so that I'm only getting the glue where I need it and I'm not making a trail of glue down the body tube as I'm trying to put it in. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and get a little more glue. Now something to keep in mind is whatever you're going to use to press 
that shock cord mount in has to be able to fit down inside. Um, I've got kind of thick fingers, not as thick as some people's, but I'm not going to put this down any farther than my fingers can reach. Now, unlike what we did with the thrust ring, I don't want to put this around the entire circumference of the rocket, only over about a third where the actual shock cord mount's going to go. It doesn't really matter if it's going to be on one side or the other. Um, and so I'm just going to put this down and I'm doing this at about the same length as my little finger. Okay, so I'm going to actually hold this about like this, bring that in, and now I'm just going to spread that over about a third of the circumference. I can roll a little bit here and use all that glue. I don't want it all over the place. Okay, I'm going to set that aside again. And now, I'm going to look down the tube, which it's hard to see with the camera here. Um, but now you can look down the tube to see where that is. And now I'm going to slide this down. I'm going to use the other side of my applicator here to move that into position. And now I can take my little finger and slide that down just a little bit more. And now I can... What I'm doing is squeezing my finger against the shock cord mount and against the tube here. So I'm bracing the opposite side of the tube with my hand. And this is just squeezing it up against there so that it's flat against. Now I can see in here there's still some glue exposed. And so one of the things I want to do is, one, make sure I don't stuff anything down here until that's dry. And I'm actually going to take the um, handle of my applicator here and just spread that out so it's thinner and it's going to dry quicker. And take that out again. <clears throat> okay. Um, the last part that we'll do with this is to attach the other end of the shock cord to the nose cone. Um, and we just do that by tying a double knot in it. And then um, the streamer, let's set that down. The streamer can just be taped onto the shock cord here. Okay, I've returned again. Uh, this is actually a nose cone from another model, but it's the same one that goes onto this. And this is in its uh, initial stages of priming. But I just wanted to show you this so that we could get this video finished. So when we're ready to put the nose cone on, uh, this is going to go on simply through that little eye that we glued on. And now you just double knot this. And, and go ahead and stretch that out quite a bit. And again, the next knot and get stretched out. That way when it relaxes, it actually tightens itself on there. Um, and then as a final touch, go ahead and just take a little dab of glue and put it on the knot here. And then you can cut off the excess uh, rubber on this side, but don't do it all the way to the knot. Cut it off right about here just so that it's not interfering with the nose cone here. So that when we stick it into the rocket, you don't have to worry about this thing flopping up and getting in the way. All right, and then with our streamer, we'll simply take a, a piece of transparent tape here. All right, and I'm just going to lay that across on this side. And then we'll place this along here. So I'm going to put the shock cord right at the edge of the streamer, and then I'm going to fold this over so that it's got the sticky parts on both the streamer and on the shock cord here. And now I'm going to take my hobby knife and just trim off the excess tape on either side. Don't cut the, the shock cord itself. Okay, um, and so that's pretty much ready to go. An alternative way of doing this, um, especially if this is done on larger rockets that use larger streamers, 
is you can also take some heavy cotton thread and simply tie the end here in a bunch um, and then tie the other end of the thread here and this just makes it so you're not holding the streamer to the shock cord um, and whether one is better than the other is kind of hard to say a lot of it's a matter of preference if you do have the streamer attached to string it makes it easier to take it off or put a new one on uh, rather than having to untape and retape this okay so to put this all together then simply take the streamer and fold it over itself lengthwise several times and then roll it up okay now remember I've still got some glue in here so I'm going to put this in here but I'm not going to leave it in here very long I'm just going to do this long enough to show how everything goes together alright so I'm going to stick that down there Okay, and then put that together like that. Okay, and there's the rocket assembled, um, not painted and finished yet, but that's about what it's going to look like. Okay, and then you just want to check one other thing here on the nose is make sure that it comes apart readily, but not too readily. Uh, and this has got a little bit of my primer in it there, so if I get past the primer, this nose is actually really loose. Okay, in fact, we don't want it that loose. Uh, I don't want to depend on paint there. And so to tighten this up a little bit, we're just going to put a small amount of masking tape on there. This doesn't necessarily need to go around the entire circumference, um, depending on how loose it is. So I'm just going to put this on just under the shoulder of the nose cone. And now test fit this again. Okay, so that's that's got some more friction. And now it's not so tight that it won't come undone. Because it does need to be loose enough that the ejection charge of the motor will kick the nose out. Um, but we don't want it flopping around or coming off while it's in flight. Now the last thing we're going to want to do to make this rocket nice and strong is to apply what are called glue fillets to the fins. And you want to do this after the fins have completely dried. Uh, again, you can do this with either white glue or with wood glue, and in this case, I actually prefer to do white glue on my fillets um, because if there are any little bubbles that form in them, the white glue lets them escape easier. So to do a fillet, we're just going to run a bead of glue along the body tube and the fin root edge like this, and then you'll take your finger and just wipe it up along there. It might take two wipes. I had a lot of glue on that one. Okay, and then if you have excess glue on your finger, you can actually apply that to the next side. And I might actually have enough. Not quite. I need to apply a little bit more glue to that end. There we go. And now I'm going to wipe that up. And so what this does is, first of all, it fills in um, any little cracks that we might have along here. And also you can see where when I put the glue on uh, the fins to begin with, it didn't necessarily get evenly spread through there. And so we've got some little knobs of glue and little areas that are um, not as gluey. And so the fillets just help even that out. And it gives, uh, first of all, just a nice finished appearance, but it makes it more aerodynamic and it also strengthens the fins. Uh, because do remember, this whole thing is basically cardboard. And so uh, anything you can do to strengthen it is going to help. Uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, I recommend that you do actually paint this rocket. Um, the instructions call for spray painting it. Uh, you can hand paint these as well. It just takes a little bit longer. Uh, but I will show here in just a moment an example of a, a rocket that I hand painted um, and then sanded in between a few coats and then finished the whole thing with a clear coat to protect the paint underneath there. Okay, so I'm going to go back uh, here and finish off my fillets. Uh, when you are completely done with the fillets, make sure you let the rocket rest in a horizontal position. If you put it in an upright position, uh, either uh, right side up or wrong side up, that glue will tend to follow gravity 
and you'll end up with fillets that have a knob on one end and, and kind of a gap on the other. We want to try to avoid that. Uh, same thing with your launch lug. Once that has dried in place, go ahead and put fillets around it as well. Now this is a rocket that's seen some history. Um, you may notice here, first of all, that it's not as long as the one we just built. And that's because it crashed once. Uh, and in doing so, had um, broken part of the body tube up in this area. But the rest of it was pretty much intact. And so what I had done is cut off part of the body tube to remove the damaged part. And then uh, I actually had to replace the shock cord mount because it was up in this area as well. Now, in doing so, I changed the flight characteristics of the rocket. So you don't want to just do this and go, okay, I'm ready to go fly this again. Uh, because the length of a rocket compared to the area of its fins is one of the things that determines how stable it is. And I actually had to make several other modifications to this rocket. Uh, but the reason I wanted to bring this one out is because this is an example originally of using brush-on paint and then um, applying a clear coat over it. And so. Uh, for example, on the nose cone here, you can actually still see a little bit of the brush marks. I couldn't completely erase them. Uh, but this was done with a few layers of acrylic paint, and then that was sanded and a clear coat applied to it. Um, the body down here actually used to be about the same color, uh, but at the same time when it became damaged, I had to redo a little bit of the finish. So the body got redone with a coat of gold spray paint overlying uh, a, cold, a coat of brushed on gold paint. Uh, and then you may be interested, if you look down here, it's got a little bit different motor mount. And this was another thing I did to um, make sure that I was still stable, is that I uh, re or replaced the original motor with a mini engine motor mount. And so all I did here was take uh, a smaller diameter motor mount. This is a standard motor mount and the body tube diameter here is an 18 millimeter. Mini engines uh, have the same power as the smallest 18 millimeter engines but they're much smaller and much lighter and so this is one of the things I did to um, change the center of gravity on this rocket so that it would be in a stable position again. Uh, if you're really interested in how all the aerodynamics and such work, um, I would go online and there are two rocketry programs I recommend. Um, I'm not getting any kickbacks from either one of them. One is called Open Rocket, which is a completely free program. Uh, and it's really workable, uh, fairly intuitive, but it allows you to design rockets and even test fly them uh, in the computer to find out whether or not they're going to be stable. The other one is called RockSim, and this is a commercial product from Apogee Rockets. Uh, that one you do have to pay for, but it does all the same things that Open Rocket does, as well as a lot more, including animated flight simulations, where you can actually make a, a computer model of your rocket, and it will show you it flying rather than just telling you its characteristics. Okay. Um, and so this is just, as I said, this is an example of an early one. I built this about 10 years ago. It's seen many flights and had a few accidents. All right, I will leave you here. I hope your rocket comes out as well as you like it and you have many good flights with it.